Good evening, everybody. Thank you for being here. It just started a torrential rain outside, but I'm sure it won't last long. The kids are very excited, very excited. They can't wait to do this show for you, and I can't wait for you to see it. So fasten your seatbelts. It's James and the Giant Peach.
Lights out, lights out, everyone. Mom, Dad? Look, it's a rhino, escape from the London Zoo. <laughs> Trotta, get up. Get up at once. But why? You're leaving the orphanage effective immediately. But where am I to go? They found a family to take you in. Family? But I don't have any family. You've got two aunts. They live in Dover. Dover? But that's where I lived with my mom and dad. And now that's where you'll be living with your aunties. Pack your things in here. That's all you've got? No clothes, no toothbrush? These belong to my parents, and they are the most important things in the entire world to me. The, mo the most important thing from here on are your aunties. You do everything they ask. Don't talk back or be nuisance. You can't ever come back here, James. You've got a family to take care of you. Yes, Mom. Now come along. We're going to have to hurry if we're going to make it to the train to Dover.
What is it, Sponge? What are we gonna do today? Same thing we did yesterday and the day before that. And the same thing we're gonna do the day after, the day after, the day after tomorrow. You mean? That's right. We're gonna do whatever's necessary to eke out a living in this nasty, cruel world. Ha! Wretched families drag in heavy pockets. Ruby pendants, all but silver lockets. We can't help relieve you of some pounds. Are you calling me fat? I'm referring to money pigeon brain. Oh. They're distracted. Look at me, I'm stunning. Has there been so masterfully cunning? We get rich. I do like how that sounds. Ha ha ha! So hard to resist. And if it slips off your wrist, too bad. bad it's property of Tiger and Sponge. And heaven forbid you might be missing some point. Boo hoo! It's property of Tiger and Sponge. You can comb the ground, check the lost and found. Did you? It's property of Spiker and Spawn! We didn't do it! As long as you keep them contributions to the policeman's fund up to date, we got no trouble with you. How can we be of help to such a devastatingly handsome representative of Scotland Yard? We've got a telegram for the two of you. Here you go. Thanks, mate. What's it say? What's it say? It says, we're having a baby! Oh, give that to me! Blah, 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 parents, blah, 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 eaten by a rhino, blah, blah, blah. Oh, dear me. It seems that we are the only living relatives to an orphan child thingy named James. Ew. Ew. Holy devil, nasty puking babies. So revolting, chicken pox and rabies. But there's no need to. Technically, we own it. James can be our help and monkey slave. We'll put him to use. He'll be our private masseuse. He's property of Spiker and Sponge. He'll wash all our clothes and scrape the jam off our toes. You property of Spiker and Sponge.
this where you live? You see that cottage at the top of the hill? That's where me and Sponge live. And where will I stay? You see that door, the one at the bottom of those stairs, the ones that lead to the dirt cellar. Yes, Mum. That's where you'll be living with the rest of the creepy crawlies. What you got in the suitcase? It's nothing, really. I'd like to see what's inside. Wouldn't you, Spongers? I would. What's in the case? I show us what's in the case. But show us what's in the case. That's it. That's all you've got. A pair of glasses and a scarf. Why, I rather like this scarf. Hey, Spike, do these glasses make you look smarter? That's unlikely, dear. May I have them back, please? They belong to my parents. Careful! Not so grabby, not so grabby. Listen here, beast. The only reason why we claimed you is because we need a little bit of help around here. Have the little beast cut down that wretched old peach tree and kill every spider and crawling vermin he can find. Is that the seashore? Way down at the bottom of the hill? I think I see some children playing there. Do you think we could go visit the seashore? Not when there's work to be done. No, wait, Spikes. The seashore might be exactly what we need. You know what, Sponge? You're right. James, run inside and grab the picnic basket from the fridge. It's chock full of lovely bites. Perfect for the beach. Yes, Mum. You did pack extra sandwiches, didn't you? Oh, I'm running on empty and my feet are killing me. Oh, I did. A day at the beach sounds delightful. All those men showing all those muscles and a stroll with my toes in the water. Oh, sandwiches. Now, I'll run and go grab the umbrella from the shed. Now, what else do we need? Oh, oh, oh. I've walked into a blooming spider's web. It's I, all over me. I told you that peach tree was full of vermin. Well, don't just stand there gawking. Help me. Oh, don't move. There's a nasty looking spider on your head. Get it off me, get it off me! Stand still and gotcha. Thanks, mate. Don't mention it. Aunties, I've got the basket. Let's hurry. Let's, let's. let's. James, you, we'll take this ax and chop down this rotten old peach tree. And kill every crawling vermin you can find. Come on, spongers, I'll race you to the beach. Oh, Spikes, you know my body's built for comfort, not speed. But I've got the sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> It is only the first rather peculiar thing to happen, and will soon cause a second very peculiar thing, which, its own, which in its own turn will cause really fantastically peculiar things to come to pass. If you come any closer, I'll scream for my aunts. And what makes you think those two hideous creatures will come running to your rescue? They're my family. Ha! Says who? That's what I've been told. Ah, but do you think so? I... I... And there it is, the very first primordial ooze of an inkling that has the potential to lead to so many of their phantasmorific things. James, this bag contains something remarkous. What's in it? Well, it's most certainly not a Ferris wheel since that wouldn't fit in the bag. And I suppose it's not a kitten since that bag is airtight. Oh dear, what if it is a kitten? You should really find out for yourself, and soon. You'll stay there? I promise. Take a look. Are you willing to reach into the great unknown and find out what's inside? Yeah, I don't know. Come on, James. Only you have the power to change the course of your wretched little life. So what's it going to be? Victim or hero? <sighs> ah! Ah! It's OK. It's OK. It's just a book. Why were you screaming? 
at your undivided attention. What's inside the book, James? It's full of recipes. Very strange ingredients. Not recipes, no. Potions, tonics, and spells. Now you must pick a spell from the book, great, and then drink the potion, and fabulous, unbelievable things will happen to you. Open wide and crawl inside the skin of something new. If you believe what's up my sleeve, I'll spin a spell for you. Then sippity sip, a magical trip, your troubles are skipping town. Once the bubble it broke, fizz rough and thick, then gabble it quickly down. Shake it up, shake it up, shake it up, shake it up. Mix around and around, mix around and around. Hear that bump, that pipe and pop and sound. Precisely ten hairs from your head. Now we must gather the rest of the ingredients and put them here. Got it? Got it! A milk with milk, a strand of silk, rare or sacked juice. Two ravens' claws for tiger paws, a marrow of a moose. Then add to our soup, to ranch the poop, the tiniest scoop will do. of well water to this bag and drink the entire potion in one gulp. But remember, whomever the slithering crocodile tongues meet first, be it fish or fowl, beast or bug, twig or tree, that will be the one who receives the full power of their magic. The full power of their magic. Now go, go James, go!
what James, asleep at the bottom of the tree, did not know was that the first of the many peculiar things that would change his life was about to happen. He did not know, but it could be felt in the air around him, in the sudden stillness that had fallen upon the garden. Get up, get up at once. Lazy bones, where have you been? I was, didn't you hear us yelling? We've been up all night. Nursing our sunburns. Let's go to the seashore. Seashore, my sunburn patootie. And yet didn't do a single thing we asked you to do. What a lazy, good-for-nothing piece of flesh you turned out to be. Why don't we throw him down the well? Then reflect on his misdeeds. Down the well he goes. Please, no, I'm afraid of the dark. Are you afraid of those centipedes with their stinging legs crawling down the back of your neck? Sponge! Or the flesh-eating earthworms wiggling between your toes. Spongers! Because that's what's waiting for you at the bottom of the well. Sponge! Look, up there, in the peach tree. What is that? It's a peach. That tree had so much as a blossom, let alone a peach in years. Look, it's growing. Oh, that's one big peach. I'd say it's a giant peach. There it goes again. Quick, let's grab a shovel or something to take out a huge hunk of it to eat. Oh, not yet, Spongy, not yet. Oh, but it smells so good. Just a bite. No. A, a taste? No. A lick? No. Oh, well, what are we supposed to do with a giant peach with, just besides eating it? Just look at it. Exactly. People will pay good money just to look at it. Sister, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Maybe. Just follow my lead. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, roll on up into the eighth wonder of the world. Just one shilling to see the world's largest peach. Aunties, there are reporters at the gate. Reporters, bring them on! But they will. You got something notable, so give me something quotable. Tell yeah, the Herald all the news, six clues, get more cachet. Girls, what would you say to an expose? Okay! The ladies garnered yelled, we're humbled and thrilled to be here. We're here to salute that fabulous fruit. Join our conference and they will pay you 10,000 each if you'll give a keynote speech. On that giant peach. Yes, yes, yes. There's money, money, money on that tree. Tell my editor what I just heard. But it offers me a pound of work. Money, money, money on that tree. Can't you see all the money on that tree? A helicopter just landed. They say they're from Hollywood. Hollywood? Bring them on. Love it, work it, let's get rich. They greenlit my pitch for your show. They're gonna flip on the sunset strip. Shoot it, air it, rave reviews. You're losing with mass appeal. Girls, how would you feel with a three pick deal? Yes, yes please. Hey, there's money, money, money on that tree. Baby, everything you heard is true. Life is marvelous in Malibu. Money, money, money on that tree. Can't you see all that money on that tree? Work hard. Why work hard? You just need a seed and a big backyard. Why get jobs? Who needs jobs? We're staying in school. I'm out of school. Lolly, lolly, love the lawyers, all your balls of PhDs. What a waste you've been to base as money grows on trees. So skip that tiny grin, let's make a deal on the negative. Just sign the line at every X, and you'll receive those weekly checks. And if your films don't get to go, I'll we'll throw you in some Broadway show. Forget our cares. We're gonna be gazillionaires. Money, money, money on the tree. Can't you see all that money on that money on that tree? Suck to me, 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 suck to me. Oh, there's money on that money on that.
Nothing more to do now except count our money. Hey, Spikes, how many contracts do you think we signed? Hundreds, my dear. Maybe even thousands. And them contracts pay us big time money in advance. Do you think we could move to the seashore? Or maybe take a trip? We ain't doing nothing. But it was me that made the peach grow. Liar! But I did make the peach grow. You couldn't even make my toenails grow. But, James, my dear, dear, Foolish boy. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, James, whatever Trotter, am a worthless, lying little boy. And no one will have to be interested in what I have to say. Not today. Not tomorrow. Not ever, ever, ever. Now keep your comments and your clever little lies to yourself. Hey, Sponge, what do you think of my new scarf? It's not nearly as lovely as my new Glasses. Oh dear, look what I've done. No, stop, please don't. Now listen here, lying little helper monkey slaves have to be punished. So from now on, you're sleeping outside. And should you ever think of running away, just remember, you can run, you can hide, but we are the only family you got. <laughs>
What's this? A doorknob on a peach? Where could that lead? Oh dear, it's rather sticky. My arm, it's stuck. Auntie Sponge, Auntie Spiker. Help, anyone, help. Why, hello. Who said that? Aren't you a delicious little bite? Keep away from me. Who are you talking to, spider? I'm not quite sure, grasshopper. Hey, is anyone hungry? I could go for a nibble, firefly. I'm feeling rather peckish myself, ladybug. What's happening? I can't see a thing. Firefly, a little light, if you please. <laughs> Look who's here. My good boy, we've been waiting for you. The only thing I'm waiting for is dinner. I'm starving. But whatever are we to eat? You're not going to eat me. Ah, help, I'm being attacked, help. Hold on, everyone, calm down, calm down. I'm afraid there's been a bit of a misunderstanding. Oh, poor thing. I do believe he thinks it's him we want to eat. Who's that? Is it gone? Is it gone? Nothing to be afraid of, it's just a little boy. Little boys are the worst of his kind. He does have a point. I'm eating him. Take one more step and I'll separate your head from your torso. Backing off. James, don't be frightened. We wouldn't dream of hurting you. You're one of us now. We're all in the same boat, so to speak. We've been waiting for you all day. We thought you would never turn up. Proper introductions are in order. I will go first. I am royalty, after all. Says who? I am a lady, the ladybug of the Order of the Nine Spotters. In case you did not know, the more spots one has, the more respectable and intelligent one is considered to be. I'm James. James Henry Trotter. Daft name, if you ask me. No one did, as I recall, Centipede. I think it's a fine name. I'm Grasshopper, the musician of the group. And the oldest and wisest of us all. I'm Spider. Look at those eyes. You've eyes like a, you're clever like a spider, James, aren't you? I wouldn't know. And I'm Earthworm. You get me quite a scare, but I'm prone to irrational fits of fear. <laughs> ah, what was that? What was that? It was just me shaking your hand. I'm afraid he can't see very well. And of course, he has no spots. I may not be able to see very well, but my hearing is impeccable, Ladybug. As you can see, I'm a firefly. The strangest thing is, this morning I woke up and I was only a glowworm. I was mucking about under the old peach tree when all of a sudden, a funny little thing came wriggling right past my nose. Bright green it was, and extraordinarily beautiful. It happened to me too. And me, there were little green things everywhere. I couldn't resist, I just ate one, and here I am. A firefly, all grown up. Now I'm centipede. Think of a guy who's gonna eat you while you're sleeping. <laughs> what are you? We're insects. At least, we were insects. Until we ate the green things. Now I'm afraid we're something quite different. The crocodile tongues! You must have eaten the crocodile tongues! Of course, you were the first beings they came in contact with. So the magic worked, just like the old man said. What? The old man? What is he talking about? I'm not sure, and I don't think it matters. What matters now is that James is here with us, all's as it should be. So James, tell us, what's your plan? Plan? We must get away from your nasty aunts as soon as possible. Uh, well, people don't usually want to hear what I have to say. I told you you wouldn't help us. We're doing it my way. But I don't like his way. Earthworm, if we leave the safety of this peach, Spiker and Sponge will <laughs> likely kill us all. Centipede's plan is to cut through the stem and the peach will gently roll down the hill. If you ask me, it's rather ingenious. And we will be free of those wretched women and on the way back to our own kind. I've done it. I cut through the stem. Our adventure begins. Peach is starting to move. Hold on, everyone. James. James Henry Trotter. You better be guarding our peach. What's that noise? Your eyes. That noise was the giant peach rolling ridiculously towards Spiker and Sponge. They gasped. <gasps> they screamed. <gasps> They tried to run, but the peach was terrifically faster. It rolled right over them. The peach flew through fences and fields, frightening farm animals of all shapes and sizes. And then the peach feared left, 
heading directly towards the village where it crashed through the walls of one of the world's most famous factories. Now this building happened to be a very famous chocolate factory, but that's another story. Back to the beach. The beach reached the chalky cliffs of Dover. It soared right over the edge of the cliffs. Is everyone all right? I'm okay. Oh, I'm not sure. I'm seeing spots. I'm seeing spots! You're seeing Ladybug. I shall never be the same again. I fear my light may be permanently damaged. James, would you climb up top and check where we are? You must come up and see for yourselves. Unbelievable. Impossible. All I see is blue. We're floating? What? In, in the ocean. What? I'm afraid we find ourselves in a rather awkward position. Awkward is hardly the word. We can't swim. But we're not sinking at all. The peach does seem rather seaworthy. He's right. The peach would have sunk by now. Well, where do you suppose we're heading? Definitely, France. The peach must have rolled over the cliffs of Dover. The lovely French city of Calais is barely 20 miles away. Then we should be across the channel and on dry land in no time at all. This peach will never make it all the way to France. Centipede, try to be optimistic for once. It's an adventure. Centipede's right. This peach will never make it to France. We've no food, no water. Drifting like this reminds me of my younger days, not a care in the world. Drifting on the breezes, nothing to answer to but my fiddle. But the sky is clear and the sea is calm. We've got nothing to do now but enjoy the adventure. Tally-ho, and away we go. Just catch this tune and sing it with me. We'll set our sail for nothing but sea. No place where we had a be.
So very thirsty. We're all thirsty, Earthworm. James, do you see a landmark of any kind? Uh, I'm afraid I don't. It's the current. It must have swept us out to sea. He's right. If we were in the middle of the English Channel, we would still see land. What? A jaunt to France is one thing, but an oceanic journey? This is the only outfit I have. Right. A costume change is exactly what we need in a crisis. But what are we to eat? What are we to drink? I propose we eat the human. All those in favor? No one is eating anyone. But if we don't eat anything, we'll die. There is something. What is it, James? I'm sure none of you want to hear what I have to say. Goodness me, why would you ever think that? My aunts were always very clear about it. Well, they were wrong, and if they were here, we would tell them so. Come on, whisper it in my ear. If I think it's a good idea, I'll tell the others. It's a silly idea. You can tell by the look on her face. On the contrary, I think it's such a good idea that James should tell you himself. I'd rather not. You'll be all right. We promise. We can eat the peach. Eat the peach? We'll sink and then we'll drown. <laughs> we can ration the servings. Stand back. I'm digging in. Just a moment, Centipede. I think our meal should be accompanied by some music. Grasshopper, would you play for us? I'd be delighted. Do all grasshoppers play the violin? Nope, only us shorthorn grasshoppers can play. We are the true musicians of the species. That bloody peach nearly killed me! Oh, thankfully, I'm a tad bit over my ideal weight, and the peach was right. That thing ran right over us. And then it rolled away, far, far away. Spikers, the boy, what's become of him? We've got bigger problems than the boy. Did you read any of the contracts we signed? Yeah, only about the money coming in advance. Do you know what an advance is? Yeah, the oodles of money that we get from signing them contracts. It's money. <gasps> Paid in advance. In advance? Of what? Delivering on all the promises we made. TV appearances, magazines, movies. Can't do any of them without the blooming peach. Oh, spikers. So, this is bad? It's worse than bad, you twit. We could go to jail. I can't go to jail. The food is wholly unacceptable for a sophisticated palate such as mine. <laughs> Are you quite finished? <laughs> I am now. Sponge, we gotta get out of here before anyone misses a peach. Oh, too late. There's already a crowd running up the hill. Are those police cars? And helicopters! We'll pack up our junk and shove it all in a trunk. A getaway for Spiker and Sludge. We're gone in a flash. Brought the rest of the cash. A getaway for Spiker and Sludge. Spiker and Smudge 
rope yet? What movie you are? Ta-ta, Scotland Yard! Get away, striker and spa. da 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 Sorry, suckers! feels quite wonderful to be with you of that wretched hillside. And Spiker and Sponge, awful humans. Did you know they killed my fiance? No. Yes, and the gigantic one. She flattened him. Horrible. <laughs> what was that? What was that? It was just centipede snoring. What? Why did the human say my name? Tell them what happened to you, centipede. Well, who cares? We're sharing. Fine. My family was in the sock and shoe racket. We were pretty famous in the bug world. Until Spiker and Sponge sprayed everyone with insecticide at a great rate of 59. Those two monsters hated everything. Even ladybugs. Who doesn't like ladybugs? I like ladybugs. They hated everyone. Spiker and Sponge were no different than the rest of you humans. Centipede, James is one of us. His kind will never be us. His kind pulls off our legs or burns us with magnifying glasses. He is not one of us. He will never be one of us. Ignore him, James. His type are pests. And your type are snobs. James, where are your parents? You haven't said anything about them. They must be very worried about you. James, dear, what's the matter? James, it's all right. You can tell us. My parents were in a horrible accident, and now they're gone. Oh, James, I'm sorry. That's why I was sent to live with my aunts, so I could be with my only family. They certainly didn't act like family. Families are kind. And patient. And love you no matter who you are. James, I've lost my family as well. <laughs> I miss my mom and dad every minute of every day. Of course you do. James, your parents are with you always. They are? Of course they are.
my parents are with me? I know it, James. And in time, you will too. But how will I know? You'll feel it, right here. We should all get some rest. It's gonna be a long night. That's all we needed. A first class cruise to New York City. How continental we are. Ain't it grand? Any moment now, the Statue of Liberty should roll into view. In a few hours, we will begin our new life. Hey, Spikes, how much money do we got left? Just enough to get to New York and set the old routine. Mm. I hear Coney Island's full of suckers. I'm getting too old to work on the boardwalk. We ain't got a choice, Sponge. We gotta make a living. And we were so close if we hadn't lost that page. Seems like we've lost nearly everything, Spongers. Everything. I mean, really. What have we got? You thought you could ride the fruits of your dreams, but you couldn't. So what? You thought life would lie just like peaches and creams, but it wouldn't. Who cares? No paparazzi. You to pose. You want a new yacht, you can't buy one of those. That's the way your new life goes, but in the end, you still got your best friend. And I got you. Glad to know you all right. So you lost all you had, and though you had quite a lot, it's in tatters. Move on, get over yourself. It's dreadful and sad till you realize you got what still matters. What still matters? My figure, my cheekbones, my radiant youth, voluptuous curves, and my solid gold too. But the very scary truth is that she. Why, wait a bit. That looks like a giant peach. That's our peach. And that's James. James Henry Trotter, bring us back our peach. He can't hear you. Are those people on the peach with the little boy? They don't look like people. They look like giant bugs. Giant bugs? How is that even possible? Oh, Spikes, what are we supposed to do? Sponge, we've got to... Follow that peace! It's a beautiful 
beautiful sunrise. It is beautiful, isn't it? Beautiful indeed. I don't usually see the sunrise. The light is magical. Hey, is anyone else getting a little burpy in the intestines? You probably ate too much. It's these waves. You're making me feel... <laughs> Are you all right? <sighs> That's much better. Look. Look over there. Look at that funny thing, gray thing, gliding through the water. It must be some sort of fish. Maybe it's come by to say hello. There are lots of them. I can see more coming. They're sea monsters. Not sea monsters, centipede. They're sharks. Sharks? Hundreds of them. And they're coming this way. Whoa. What do they want? What do they want? I don't know, but I think they're eating the peach. Do you think they could sink the ship? We must do something. Go away, you nasty creatures. Go away. I don't Seagulls. Hundreds of them. Seagulls? I'm terrified of seagulls. They must have seen you. To them, you're a delectable treat. Hold on, everyone. Whoa. Is there nothing we can do? There is something. Listen, everyone. James has an idea. If an airplane can take to the sky, then why can't a peach? Because an airplane has an engine and wings. And so do we. Do you mean the seagulls? Exactly. They can be our engines and our wings. How's that going to work? Spider, is your web strong? Strongest in the world. And can you make lots of it? I can spin all the web you need. Perfect. We'll loop one end of spider's webs around the necks of the seagulls, and then we'll tie the other end to the stem of the peach. And they'll lift the peach out of the water. That's brilliant, James. But how are we going to get the seagulls to come down to the top of the peach? Bait. I find that term incredibly insensitive. <laughs> but you are the biggest, juiciest earthworm the world has ever seen. I won't do it. Why don't you just listen to the plan first? I don't give a hoot about the plan. I'm not about to get pecked to death by a flock of seagulls. You'll be a martyr, and I will respect you for the rest of my life. And so will I. Your name will be in all the newspapers. Earthworm gives life to save friends. But he won't have to give his life. I won't let them hurt you, Earthworm. I promise. Fine, I'll do it. For you, James. Good lad, I knew you had it in you. Thank you, Earthworm. Action stations, everyone, we've not a moment to lose. This is never gonna work. Hey, seagulls, over here, check this out. If you are viewing me in your bird's eye view, I got a sweet little treat that's just for you. I'm your yummy gummy, plump and juicy. Put me in your tummy, plump and juicy. So delicious. Take a peek and open that beak for plump and juicy. I can keep you chirping, plump and juicy. When it's me a slurping, come and get some plump and juicy me. Oh, I guess we're not hungry. At least we tried. Come on, Earthworm, you can do it. Give me double the pleasure, twice the snack. You start dividing a worm and to grow back. A never-ending fancy feast. Bring a friend or twelve at least. Oh, don't pretend I'm not a handsome beast. I'm this plump and juicy I don't mean to plant it Plump and juicy But you know you want it Plump and juicy And, and nutritious. nutritious Once you peck your bag in for seconds Plump and juicy See your eyes are bulging Plump and juicy You can help indulging Come let loose some plump and juicy Ruffle some feathers. Ooh, this feels good. The flavor it cannot be matched. Come savor it, no strings attached. Come on, before it's gone. Bump and juicy. Come and get it, seagulls. Bump and juicy. 
this should be illegal. Pop and juicy. Both delicious. Que bonito your papacita. Pop and juicy. You can hide. But we're the only family you've got. <laughs> <laughs> and you and the peach are coming home with us forever. After we fumigate these bugs, of course. Here, buggy, buggy, buggy. Stop. Stop it right now. You are mean, nasty, horrible people, and you will not hurt my family. Our peach. It's falling. Run for your life. Ah! Is it bad that I don't feel sad? Not at all, James. How do you feel? I feel relieved. Those two monsters can never hurt anyone ever again. We held on through that storm. The clouds have finally parted and we're safe and warm. Take a breath, sing a song. Finally we landed right where we belong. Ours went on to do 
some remarkable things. I became a world famous designer of fabulous shoes. And I became a Broadway lighting designer. I used my web to build the most beautiful bridges the world has ever seen. And I became a social activist, forming bait. Bugs against insensitive terminology. Grasshopper and Ladybug got married and had many, many children. But always thought of James as their firstborn son. When James grew up, he traveled the world, telling children everywhere about his amazing adventures on the giant peach. That, my dear audience, is exactly what you have just seen. I told you it was all true. Welcome home, welcome home, just like a father and a mother. Oh, welcome home, just like a sister and a brother. Oh, welcome home, oh, we'll always have each other. I gotta tell you, but it was really good. I'm so proud of each person up here. I just can't tell you. So we hope that you will come back tomorrow because other people are doing different things. So thank you for coming, and let's have one more round of applause. All right, you guys, go change. <laughs>